Okay, so this is the finals of this tournament. I don't know how much how much of the payout for this tournament is, honestly. I should I should really read the tournament rules. I don't know. Going Warlock in the mid-game can be good. I think you really do have to find both Shadow Fiend and Necro to do it. And then after that, what are you gonna do? Dip into like a witch doctor? I'm talking early mid-game. I'm talking like an alchemist isn't even good anymore, so warlocks are worse. Yeah, warlocks just seem like meme. Yeah, Warlocks seem like full memes. They're close to being good. Like, it's a good buff, they just don't have enough good units. They don't have a third good unit, so th that's the problem. Like, I guess Venomancer is probably the best third unit, right? If you have Shadow Fiend, Venomancer, and Necro. The... Necro, Shadow Fiend, Alchemist. There's no way Alchemist is better than Venomancer. There's no way. Not even close. Venomancer could be very underrated. How do tier lists rate Venomancer right now? I'm curious, like how do how do like the top community members tier list rate the Venomancer? You gain 30% of the damage you deal after arm is calculated. Veno is good now since beasts are good. They reverted the beast buff, right? Yo, what's up, Repelmer? How's it going, man? Does the de yo yo Repelmer? When's the dev stream? Is that in 20 minutes? Am I gonna miss that? Okay, starting it. Guys, this is it. No more uh, no more messing around. So let's see if anyone's gonna get banned. Okay, no one gets banned. So we have our own tier list. We see a pile of pretty garbage stuff in front of us. I've kind of, I've personally rated Axe the highest out of these. I think Axe is just a pick. I oh, mean. Axe is just better than these. I can tell you, man, I've been out of the Gwent for a couple months. Oh, yeah, I read about that, Repelmer. I read about that. Like, you... Didn't you have, like, a computer problem or something? Man, that sucks. You were a gem in the Gwent community. Honestly, every time I would, like, try to build a deck, it was like... ah. I, I felt like, you know, you know, like the Simpsons did it, it was like Repelmer did it. Like every time I would try a new idea, it's like, you know, Repelmer did it. Um, you would never lock for this, right? That's just a hard meme. I don't know. I really favor finding Tiny here. You're about, we're about to get three gold after this, right? Are we actually in the tournament now? Yeah, this is it. We are getting... We're getting three gold from this, is that right? I think you get three gold from this one, right? Basing gun plus three. So if we lock, we pick up two CKs. I think that's worth it on average. I don't know. This is like... This is kind of the bitch move, honestly. It makes it harder to complete, like, eh, in hindsight, I think this is a misplay. I don't know. I see a 2 of of a decent unit, and I lock it, but CK doesn't really open options. It kind of locks you out of options, because if you get a CK2, then it's harder to go Shadow Fiend or Quap, which locks you out of those options, and CK doesn't lead to anything, because Knights is a meme. Knights is an okay splash in the mid-game, but it's not something you can really try to do. Yeah, in hindsight, I, this is regrettable. I should have tried to open myself up to options. Find a third warrior, find, like, Slardar, or find... Se Morphling for second elemental, or Beastmaster, or Juggernaut for orc. This was this was a bad play. I don't know. Something about CK just seems so juicy. Like I just see this little like black and orange boy, and I'm just like, it just seems so succulent. I don't I don't know why. I think it does have to do with the art. He like he looks like he would be a strong hero, you know. So CK is not part of my late game plan, and he's the best blades carrier. So you step CK a step back so he doesn't get targeted, but he's still close enough. So like he'll he'll walk a step forward, 
Draw aggro to Tiny Morphling, who have the elemental buff. And CK will kind of dish out damage. There we go. That's perfect. So the ogres are getting stunned here. Okay, our Morphling is actually just toast. Damn, dude. Elemental's blow. It's official. I mean, we're never beating a level 2 co-op and 2 ogres anyway, so that's fine. We've got the situation we want here. Like, we're not fighting for board. We're fighting for options. Options are stronger than board. Super JJ has, like, a Pidgeotto. This is... Why does he have a Pidgeotto? <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> I mean, so normally, I would think about pumping here, but completing all my options is really good. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do this. I could actually try to get Warriors online. I think I'd rather have double CK. I could go Tusk and Axe instead. Maybe Warrior buff is just better than having two demons. Since we're already losing, we don't want to fight for boards that much. Okay, maybe Morphling in the front line is just a meme. This guy also has a level 2 pop. What the hell? JJ said it's because his haircut looks like it. Oh, yeah. That makes sense then. That's a that's a nice meme. Nice meme. Yeah. Oh, hey, Stig. Yeah, two cop twos. That is a pretty good meme. Luckily, though, we're high rollers, so we don't care. There's a certain point where, like, if we're on a losing streak already, there's kind of a certain point where... So now we can choose to kill the elemental bonus for a warrior. And I think given Morphling is just too squishy, I think this is just the better play here. And Axe now picks up, like, warrior as well. Thinking about orcs. Um, we're not going to pump yet. I want to leave my options open. And my board is actually good all of a sudden. Like, my board should actually be able to fend for itself pretty well. Puck can kind of open me to mages. We're not playing for interest here. We're not playing for pump. I think Puck, Puck is just the obvious option. I'm not really playing for assassins. Assassins is outside of my comfort zone anyway. I don't want to go assassins in a tournament. In ladder, you want to challenge your comfort zone. In tournament, you want to stick to it. I don't want... It's a bad idea to leave your comfort zone here. Oh, we actually lost. Damn. This guy has a mask of madness. Two items. Or my items. This is interesting. I mean, we're kind of high rollers all of a sudden, right? Like, our board now kind of loses to nothing. Like, if we pump, our board actually beats everything right now. If we pump. I mean, we can literally start a win streak, right? Like, this board just got nuts all of a sudden. I don't know. Like, our losing streak was just starting, but we have the ability to fight for the board and start actually turning this into a win streak, I think. I mean, other people have strong boards, so maybe just because this is like an above average power level lobby, that might not be true, but I don't know. This board is quite nuts. And now I'm just going to start playing for interests. Third Tusk would make this board even nuttier. But we, we've kind of stabilized. I think if my losing streak was a little deeper, like if we were already at like plus three somehow, then maybe I wouldn't have done that. Dude, we are high rollers. Holy shit. What is happening, guys? This is ridiculous. We can't even fit these in. Oh, we have to take out the tree for now, right? Dude, what is happening? Sell Treant? Uh, we could sell Treant if we win this. I don't think that's a good idea. I think... I mean, I still want to put it in. Because I want to pump one more time and go to 6. I want to actually just play for a win streak harder here. And the Treant will help that. And I want to shut down these people's win streaks too. So I could sell this right now for interest because it gives me f uh, four, but I'd rather take this pump here. A little bit more aggression. I want to fight more aggressively and then I'll start saving for interest because I have like just a better thing to put in, right? So now I can play the Treant too. And now I beat every board really hard. Sure. 
This might be a little aggressive, maybe. So let's see what I'm jumping on with my bounty hunter. Looks like nobody really has a backline. I'm jumping on like quops and stuff. Positioning probably doesn't matter too much here. We'll get out and start playing for, um, start playing for interest pretty soon. But I think like, it, I just want to kind of rack up a board and start a win streak going. So my win streak is plus one. The thing is we don't, so it's important to understand it. We don't have a win streak yet, but we have the board state that can force a win streak. And not only can it force a win streak, but it can force these people to lose their win streaks. And that's really important right now, right? So because we have that power, we're fighting for a win streak even before we even have the win streak. Usually in this game, you want to be fighting for a win streak that you already have instead of doing something like this. DK. I mean, it's an early DK, but it's also kind of bad. I don't really favor DK that much. TBH. Um, so Batrider, I think, is very trolly. I would never favor this at this point. I'm just going to chill here, I think. Benching Bounty and Tusk can start us on a level 3 path for that. We need to get to 10 because this is Mud Golems, which means we need to beat this, and keeping Edge for the plus 1 is nice. I don't know. I mean, I could try to start building Elves or something. Maybe it's... I feel like it's too early to do that, especially since I already have a board that wins early. So let's check out what people are doing. So this is Bulldog, I think. He's committing for Mages, and he has a good start. He actually is, like, 100% with Mages. What the hell? That's insane. Super JJ is going orcs like good stuff right now. He has a Ricky on bench, I guess. Um, I Annihilate is going good stuff warriors. He actually looks pretty similar to us. But yeah, it looks like this guy's going warriors. This guy's already pretty deep into elves. Tides is like warriors with shadow demons. BSJ is also going elves, it looks like. He really wants to transition this into Elves. He might not be able to, though. So we're at round 11. We're just going to keep racking up our streak. I honestly don't know what to do with this build. I'm not going to lie. I actually I really don't know what to do here. We have a lot of options. People are going kind of all over the place. This guy's just got a really good mage build already. He wants to go like mage dragons. I might just try to get like a win streak good stuff kind of value. Honestly. I'm closing myself up to options though. I think I'd rather have... Uh, I'm playing for interest. I don't know if this was right. Losing the option to stockpile these to try to get a level 3 is not something I really like. However, the Beastmaster is. So Beastmaster is crazy good, right? I can kick the Triant for the Beastmaster here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we see the number 1 guy going, yes, could try to bench a Slardar because he's going mages. Level 1 tree, or level 1 lone Druid has to be better than level 2 Triant, right? I think that's right. Did I say Beastmaster or is someone else confused? I might have said Beastmaster. I mean, he does master beasts. I don't know. It's possible the level 2 Treant was better. It's like, if I can't get the bear off in time, it's like a little too slow to be very effective. Lone Druid is kind of dependent on having, like, a crown or something. So we need to be kind of aggressive about our streak here. I could take a hyper-aggressive pump. The thing is, like, I don't know how easily we beat mages. We would pump three times. This is a really important streak. This is a really aggressive play. But it gets us... I don't know. I think I have a board that can beat anything right now. And I have a really big win streak. And I really need to knock down Bulldog's win streak. Like, he, he has a just incredibly uncontested win streak. 
I think even against a board that can kind of like, even if he gets surprises or high roll value, I think I beat everything right now. And preserving my win streak is just too much gold. It's just way too much gold. And now I can start fighting for interest again. The problem is I still have no direction. Like I'm just fighting for the early game and I don't like this playstyle. I think this playstyle is actually very overrated by even high level players. So we're just gonna sell this, right? I mean, if we find the Furion and find like two more trees, early druids could actually be good. I guess at this point we check to see who has, who's like benching druids, how much people are contesting them. Uh, enchantresses don't count, that's just investing in coin. Uh, this guy's going druids, Michael BSJ is going druids. He's gonna try, try to scoop up as many as he can. So there's two guys right now going druids that are trying to scoop up as many as they can. So I can, I mean, I have to sell the enchantress because I have to get into this enchantress range. And if I find like a Furion and two more trees, I'll have another enchantress by then. So I really don't know what I'm talking about. So this is Bulldog. Have we lost to this? Ah, never mind. This was, this was dumb of us. Fighting aggressively for this win streak if we lose to Bulldog is just bad. I didn't realize we lost to Bulldog. That was a big misplay. Fighting for interest there would have been more important. So that's a pretty insane build. So this is Wolves. We can't really get interest here, so we just have to stockpile things. Honestly, a Slardar 2 would be a big deal. Replacing Tiny and opening up, like trying to get the Naga buff online is good. Bulldog has what we call in the industry, the nuts. They're just gonna open ourselves to options here, right? Don't really want that, but on, I think. I don't know. I do hate builds like this. I hate, like, builds that fight for the board aggressively. I feel like I've kind of locked myself out of options if I want to play for uh, interest. That aggressive pump... I mean, we're still putting out a lot of pressure on people, but we cost ourselves a lot of interest. Mask of Madness is interesting. Who does this go best on? Have it on for knights. Yeah, I'm not going knights. To go, to even think about going Knights, I think you have to get a big C, uh, level 2 CK and a level 2 Luna early. And then, and then you maybe think about going Knights. I think Knights are just kind of bad. I mean, they do kind of counter mages though, so... I don't know. It's possible I could have thought about it. Losing one streak before creeps hurts. Do creeps help one streak? I actually didn't know that. If they do. Do assassins often get targeted by auto attacks? Can I put the Mask of Madness on the Bounty Hunter? How often do assassins actually get, like, auto-targeted? Is it less often than a normal hero? It should be, right? I think the Cloak on Lone Druid is the best play, probably. Dude, Jesus Christ, Bulldog. So, Kunkka's kind of interesting. I mean, it doesn't beat any tier 2s though, right? Period. Like, I could replace Tiny for a Kunkka. Some people might think that's good. Like, boat is good. Can I actually beat a tier 2 value, though? I don't know if this is a net positive trade. I kind of feel like it's not. I don't know. I think some people would tell me to do this, and... I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're queued into Bulldogs, so we just lose no matter what, right? Oh, he just lost his streak to Elf Druid Boy. So this Elf Druid guy's coming online. I mean, we're hitting really good interest at this point, but 
I don't know. Without a plan, interest is kind of a joke, right? Tree is the replacement. Oh yeah, that's uh that's a good point. Tree is the replacement. <laughs> I like the way you think. I mean, we're just leveling up and trying to trying to reactively develop a plan. You want to plan later than this? So this guy's going hunters. Whoa. JJ likes orcs hunters. Michael is now going dragons elves, which is kind of scary. Didn't see what an annihilate was going. Tides has like a warlock kind of mid-range thing. I mean, we're starting to lose. I think it's okay at this point. We've kind of lost our win streak anyway, and like hitting interest ranges and trying to plan out what we want to do is probably more valuable. If we get something like a Scylla 2, our board gets a lot better quickly. I don't know. This is one of my weaknesses when playing this game. One of my weaknesses is just like finding boards like this and not really actually knowing exactly how best to take them. Like, I... Basically, you have options in terms of transitioning. And I don't know, like, how to play for value on, like, tier 4 and 5. We're starting to really fall off. Because we just have low synergy power, basically. And we lost a lot of our interests just trying to fight for a win streak that we couldn't fight for against Bulldog as well. I mean, the one thing we know is we need Nagas. Bad. So, like, preserving the Slardar on bench for a level 2 Slardar is going to be good. People love, like, elves and dragons. I don't know. I mean, I could try to go mages as well. I just, I don't know if that's even a good idea. take out next? Uh, tiny, right? I think it's likely the tiny. 20 is Furbies. Uh, I guess it could be Axe over tiny, actually. I could see an argument for Kunkka. I could see an argument for Bounty Hunter, actually. I think Bounty jumping it back is good in a couple of these matchups, though. Like, it's really important in some of these matchups that Bounty is jumping it back. I don't know, there's not there's not really a single answer to these boards. Like people are already on good stuff. Maybe trying to force knights earlier actually could have been decent. Just cause the top player is mages with a nuts mage builds. And we got an early CK, but I just don't like knights though. I just really don't favor them at all. Three, four, five. So we go for a sixth warrior, right? Two, three, four. Maybe committing harder for six warriors could have been the play. Eh. In hindsight, I should have tried to force warriors harder, I think. This was pretty close, honestly. Plate mail and hood might have made the difference in a, in a board like this. So we're up to six warriors working on a level three tusk. Um, 
Bounty Hunter will probably eventually go, right? And I want him to have the DPS anyway. Should have tried pressuring warriors earlier, honestly. If I was gonna do something like this. Because warriors kind of need to, like... If you're gonna commit to going warriors, it needs to be earlier than this. Like, they're kind of at the point where they're starting to fall off. Level 2 Dusa will really help turn things around. At this point, we're hitting in the... Uh, we're actually hitting a losing streak at this point. I don't know, because we're literally on another losing streak and we're looking for a level 3 Dusa. Maybe I do actually need to just level to 9 before doing anything else. We have to start fighting for this board sooner than we kind of currently are, honestly. We're going to sell the Bounty Hunter pretty soon, I think. isn't happening. Uh, yeah, I think so. This is Bulldog, and we don't even have Nagas yet. Wait, how did this happen? Are we winning this? We don't even have the second Naga. What happened here? I don't know if I want to sacrifice this one point of interest. It's it's got to be worth just like a tiny bit of interest for putting in a Dusa, right? No, oh, that was weird. Hit a bit of lag. I mean, we could sell the tusks, but I actually kind of want to try to keep the tusk dream alive. This completes the Naga set, which is kind of nice. Dragons have a decent amount of magic damage. DK does a lot of magic damage through his passive. I think literally almost a majority of DK's damage is magic, just because it's like the damage over time from his breath. I don't know exactly. What percentage of uh, like DK2's damage is magic in a dragon build? It's a lot. It's like 50%, right? Maybe more. Death Prophet's a meme, right? Level 2 Death Prophet could have been good, maybe. I'm not going Warlocks here. The hunter feasts. I don't really think I want to go Gyro Chopter. What's the best use of uh, Mask here? I guess Plate Mail should have been on Dusa, I think. Gyro Chapter is good against elves, right? But so is just Enigma. Is Enigma just better than Gyro? Oh, it's in the trees. Wait! I can't get it! I can't get the item! Okay. What the? Oh, okay, we got it. Okay, we're good. That would have been pretty funny. I actually just don't know who these DPS items should go on. It needs to be someone like Tanky, right? It's kind of hard without like a backliner. Oh, 
nice. We got one down. Sweet. I mean, we could get out of the six warriors pretty soon. It's like, it has to be at the point where it's falling off, right? I don't know if there's a warrior I can really pl replace for that much value, though. Getting another losing streak. I mean, we can upgrade a couple of heroes, but it's never really going to do that much is kind of the issue. This fight kind of happened in a bad order. Are we winning this? It's got elf bonuses and stuff. Yeah, we can't win this. Took out AM, though. Oh! Oh, come on, Medusa. Why, Medusa? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like, we've got the Naga boost up. We can replace... I guess we could replace, like, the Axe level 2 for, like, a Troll Warlord level 1 or something. That doesn't really seem that good. I think I just want to keep 6 Warriors on the board until the game ends. I don't know. I think it's probably the incorrect play. We're getting pretty trashed here. We already have two beasts, right? Sell out of tiny here. Well, we beat Bulldonger at least. He's really fallen off. I don't know what happened there. So, two people out already. I mean, we're losing against most people, but I mean, we're still staying in. Replacing our axe with like a level two troll could help. I don't know, getting a 10th euro wouldn't be bad. Maybe rolling aggressively at this point just doesn't really do anything. Maybe saving up for 10th actually matters. Six warriors a trap? Yeah, I agree. So this is round 30, which is lizards. Do lizards have splash like dragons? I should know this, but I don't. I am very confident that, like, if I were playing better, I wouldn't be running six warriors here. But I'm still going to do it. Yeah, F1. Yeah, F1 does kind of nothing for us, right? We don't have, uh, we don't have a mithril.
up eight times. Okay, something went wrong with my math there. Lost a little bit of interest. This Tusk level 3... I mean, there's a very good chance this can never happen. Well, we're queuing into more magic damage, luckily. Our uh, Maga buff is kind of keeping us in the game. Dude, why was that Dusel so late? Did she just not get targeted at all? That was pretty bad. Oh, might finish in the bottom four. This is uh this is a pretty I would say inefficient finisher here. Oh we got Bulldog. We should beat him, right? Like we ever tied without a VIP booster on it, we sold our other tide. Not playing for that interest. I mean we, we th th these like last few turns might just be costing us a couple of rankings. Like these these are uh these are just bad plays. Getting kinda sloppy here. I think at this point I sell the axe for even a level 1 troll, just because I have too many melee heroes now. I mean, axe is... I would say axe is the weakest link here. Because even tiny procs like elementals. Not a fan of axe here. I think having a uh, troll on the right side is probably best. We got Ravage off. We got Scream off. I mean, that's pretty good. If we can't win a fight with this... Ooh. Yeah, it looks like we can't. Mm, that's pretty awkward. Let's try running to the left side. Go, Courier! Oh, we made it! We did it, guys! Uh, number three, <laughs> easy. Okay, so overall, analysis of that game, uh, basically, we got lucky at the start. Um, if I was a better player off of that, off of the kind of opener start, I think we can make number one pretty easily. We made a big mistake pumping aggressively, even though there was no way we could beat Bulldog's board. And cost us some interest that way. Our biggest misplay, however, was in the late game, where we didn't transition out of six warriors. You guys might have noticed a bit of a paradox in what I said, because I said specifically, A, I'm very confident that six warriors isn't proper, and B, I'm still going to run it anyway. This is because it's kind of stable, and while I don't necessarily... Well, while I know for a fact it's not the best way to play it, I'm not exactly sure what my different options were there. It felt very limited. I know for a fact that I had a better option, I just didn't know exactly what it was. And I felt like I could kind of have a safer finisher if I just kind of stick with the higher tier heroes I have. Which, you know, I I'm positive I wouldn't do if I knew exactly what to do. Um, but this is also the kind of start that I'm just weakest on, inherently. The start where I'm not really sure what to do. Basically. Like, having... I kind of prefer being on a lose streak than a win streak. Because when you're lose streaking, you're at least like... You at least have a plan, you know? When you're win streaking, you kind of have options instead of a plan. And of course, a better player can make perfect use out of those. We're not like perfect. But we finished top three in the tournament. Number th number three. That's pretty good. What's the what's the payout for that? How much money did we just win? 
Um, I actually have no idea how much money this tournament pays. Okay, guys, let's see what we took. We got 500 bucks. That's pretty poggers. That's okay. I wish I had done better. Again, I could have made top one. I just misplayed. At least we uh, we leached off of these guys' MRs pretty hard. Some of them were just using their mains, like BSJ and Crane. So we just we kind of got some uh, got some MMR out of this. Even though we didn't take first place, we didn't play for money. We at least stole a lot of these queen players as MMRs. Sweet. So that's um that's pretty nice, I guess. Is there anything else to evaluate about how that game could have gone? We can watch Super JJ kind of clear this out. Bulldog misplayed pretty hard too. Bulldog and me both had pretty nutty openers and we both didn't really know exactly how to play them. It felt like everyone was kind of on everything good. I should have identified warriors earlier. I should have, I should have probably done that, tried playing a little bit more aggressively for Warriors. Like, for example, there was a point, if you guys remember, if you were watching very closely, there was a point where I sold my Tusk. My level 1 Tusk. Honestly, interest in the early game might matter too much to make that not worth it, but... I might not have done that if I wanted to kind of commit to keeping Warriors for a while. You want a nutty late game more than a nutty early game? Yeah, of course. And a good player will transition a nutty early game into a nutty late game. But it's harder than it seems. Because you have to make a really important decision. Like, it, the game doesn't kind of make the decision for you. You have to, like, you have to make the best with what you're given. So, we took number three in this tournament. I think that's fairly good. I'm okay taking number three in this tournament. In the last auto chess tournament I played, I think both auto chess tournaments I've played in are 16 player tournaments. What did I get in the last one? Did I get number six? Did I get number six in the other tournament? I might be misremembering. I think that's what I got. So I got number six and number three in two 16 person tournaments. That's like, that's not bad. That's honestly pretty okay. 